Welcome back to Armchair Coaches, and today is a great day because, check it out, we got these fancy new mics. Look how professional we are. Look at us. Look at us go. Yes, indeed. Let's be appropriate here. This is obviously a G-rated show, yeah, totally. But we are officially halfway through the season. Uh, well, kind of, because there's 17 games now. Because, there's no halfway anymore. Yeah, there's no halfway. But, you know, let's talk about the best teams, best teams teams in the nfc so the nfc is very very top heavy because there's some really really good teams in the nfc but there's a lot of teams that suck too but first what i want you guys to do is to offer to drive the like and subscribe buttons to the airport but also secretly pack a bunch of 3.5 ounces of toothpaste in their in their baggage dude i feel like the drop-off is so big and like we'll talk about the honorable mentions kind of we have a top three but like i would say there's like a top really like five or six but like i'll say that so my honorable mentions are going to be dallas is number one so and i think this is why i think dallas is very good but i also see dak had a calf injury um but dallas won yesterday's game with cooper rush Mm -hmm. you know what i mean let's not kid ourselves the cowboys are good the cowboys are good they're Uh, very good yeah the cowboys are good i do have my criticisms of them Dak, he's had, he's been having a great season. I don't think the calf injury is going to be that much of an issue because he's just you know he's a tough guy. Yes, they played the Bucks close at the beginning of the season, but we have to remember the Bucks turned the ball over five times in that game. There's not going to be a whole lot of games, especially games that matter, that Tom Brady is going to be allowing his offense to give the ball up five times, and they still lost. So yeah, that, so that they haven't really played that good of a schedule. And- and That's he, the thing. And here's one thing that people are like not taking into account. Trayvon Diggs has seven picks in seven games. Which is insane. That that is insane. And unsustainable. That, yeah, that is it's also. not sustainable. Like, don't like show me someone that's finished with like 18. This isn't, dude. They, like, you don't have stick them on you. Like the with the rules, there's no fucking way you finish with 16. So, like, here's the thing is Trayvon Diggs isn't even a good cover corner. He's not. And he's he, one of the worst run defending he's corners. He's one of the, the worst yeah. run defending corners. He gives up huge plays because he tries to jump the ball to make picks. No shit. He has a bunch of picks. He's given up 1,200 yards. He's on pace to give up 1,200 yards this season, which would be number one in the NFL. One person giving away 1,200 yards at that. Dude, that's brutal, dude. That's a that's lot. That's brutal. That's a so lot. So picks are great, and they're game changers, but first of all, he's not going to get continue like this, and so if you don't continue like this and you're playing bad coverage, you're fucked. But yeah, I think that fucked. defense is still really improved, so I don't think him taking a step back is going to crush them, uh, but I think, I think their defense is a little more middle of the tier than they've been playing. Yeah, they they have some weapons. Their defense is just that it's gotten better than it's been yeah, in past it's years. Their their defense has been one Atrocious. of the worst in the NFL for the last couple of years. So they have some weapons. They're going to be good. They're going to be a playoff team. Yeah, I I, I just don't I don't see them in the NFC Championship. I no. could maybe I could see them getting past the wild card round, but yeah. I just I think that's yeah I they'll cheat their place. It. They they always do that. They always cheat their way past the wild card round. Honorable mention, numero dos is the Green Bay Packers. And everyone, before you freak out, because I know the Packers just beat the Cardinals this week. Did they really? Did they really? They are an A.J. Green turning around away from losing that game. Dude. The Packers, I'm sorry, they didn't, they don't, you don't deserve to win that game. Yes, all right, I will say I am a Packers hater, but this, what I'm saying is completely valid. They had the ball on the goal line and they got stuffed on fourth down. That's bad. And on top of it, you let the Cardinals drive the ball 95 yards down at the end of the game. You deserve to lose that game. I, I think we should preface that we are extremely biased about this specific team. That is a, that is a fact. That's I, a fact. Because cause we both do not like Aaron Rodgers. I can't, and, yeah. Yeah, but, I, I, but, I you're gonna t- but people are like, Aaron Rodgers, he gets it done with everyone. He, he can get it done ring. with ev- everyone. Um, how many Super Bowls does he have, Justin? Oh, he's like nine. Yeah, he's right? got like nine, right? Yeah, he's the he's, best. He's, he's the best. Yeah, he's definitely the best. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, oh, yeah, Tom Brady. You know all the great quarterbacks that we talk about that are the best of all time that only have one Super Bowl, right? You know, John Elway, you know, uh, Troy Aikman, one Super Bowl. Um, you know, Peyton Manning, one Super Bowl. Tom Brady, one Super Bowl. So, you know, you have all those great quarterbacks that are the best of all time with one Super Bowl. So, yeah, and you know, good he, job, Aaron. Yeah, exactly. And he's totally never had receivers like Devontae Adams on his team to help him. So, you know. Yeah, James Jones suck. Who, yeah, like, yeah, Jordy Nelson was terrible. Yeah, Donald Driver was terrible. Like, get the fuck out of here. So, okay, so for our top three, because Justin and I have a, uh, a, a top three in the NFC that we agreed on, and I think any sane football fan would agree with, too. Uh, where do you want to start this off, Justin? I think we should start with number three, 
And my number three was the Cardinals. I don't disagree with that. I had the Cardinals at three, and the reason why is, okay, so, like, let me go over a few stats real quick. So, Kyler Murray is, like, obviously, like, a top three front runner for the MVP easily, right? Like, Absolutely. Like, you know, you got a few other guys, and it, I think it kind of switches with every week, but Kyler Murray's been so important to the Cardinals that it's, like, he's clear-cut, you know what I mean? He's been consistent, they're too. The, yeah, and they're the number 11 defense right now. They're number three in defensive coverage, which That's... means they have the second, they have the third best secondary in the NFL, and they have the number seven pass rush. And especially if they get to a certain or a playoff game against a team with a certain guy that throws really well, and its name is Thomas Edward Brady. Exactly, and that helps to have the number three coverage defense. Well, here's the thing: is right now, and on top, they're number eleven in defense, but they have the six. They're sixth in yards per game on offense. And they have three receivers. There's no surprising there. They have three receivers over 400 yards through the first, what, seven games, and one receiver at 327, which is Rondale Moore. Between receivers and tight ends, you could make the, an argument that they have the best weapons in the oh, entire Oh, easily. League. Zach Ertz, DeAndre Hopkins, A.J. Green, Christian Kirk, Rondale Moore. Like, dude, they are that's very... That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous, that's dude. Ri- and they have a solid offensive line, they have too. Two Not, ho- I, I wouldn't say it's a top 10 offensive line, no. but it's it's definitely one of the better ones. And but, Kyler Murray's fast enough that he can make it work. Yeah, and I, I, I think, honestly, what I do think is I think the Cardinals are very, very good. But I also think that... Um, You're going to say Cliff Kingsbury. Yeah, I know. Dude, yeah. I just, dude, I can't. Like, you can't... I can't... I can't do it. I can't trust him. I can't look at him and be like, that guy has it together. That guy at 8 p.m. goes to bed. That guy gets up early and does his work. You're that, just not going to convince me. Like, that guy is not dude, that going guy out before is the game. on games. Friday night, f- sorry, Saturday morning at 2 a.m., still s- ripping cigs. Like, you're you're li- you're lying to yourself if you're telling me that this guy's going to bed. Do, like, doing, doing some Ripper Magoos off some, some co-ed's Magoos, asses. Bro. It's just some nose beers, dude. And you just, like, you know? You can't convince me that he's not doing that. Bro, you're just not going to convince me that this guy's getting up at, like, 7 a.m. on a Saturday to game plan. Yeah, yeah. No, this guy's really, really hustling. It's Absolutely bullshit. not. So let's talk about a team that just became even more deadly with the acquisition of a Hall of Fame pass rusher, and that is the Los Angeles Rams. So I told you this before the podcast. Oh, oh! Did you did you tell it to me before? I told you this before the podcast. If the Lions don't win a game this season, I'm done. And here's my case for it. I'll be a Rams fan. Do you need to make a case? No, well, here, okay. People will be like, "Oh, you're not loyal." Tell me what team you are. If you tell me I'm not loyal, call me out right now and then comment your team. Comment your team. Tell me who your team is. I don't give a fuck who it is. Tell me your team, and then come at me. Because the last team that I, that was able to have that kind of r- relation to you was the Browns, and now the Browns dude, are the good. The only year I didn't watch every Lions game was the year I was in rehab. And on that, I stole the newspaper every morning. I watched every game of the 2008 season. I watched every game of this season. And, dude, I just honestly... Just for my own personal life, I can't. I just can't. Mm. Yeah, I can't ju- hey, do also, it. by the way, uh, Justin's six years sober, by the way. So, uh, you know, che- cheers I, to that. I can't. I can't. Yeah, drinks. I can't. <laughs> I just can't. I can't do it anymore. I can't do it to my family. I can't do it to myself. I, like, I'm going to fucking die, dude. I'm going to die. Like, I don't I, know how people can. Dude, if Michigan State wasn't good right now and other Michigan sports were awful, dude, it'd just be like, like, what am I alive for? You know what I mean? Like, I got sober so I could watch football without people yelling at me. Well, and at now least I can't you, watch you have football the, without yelling at myself. You, at least you have the amazing state of Michigan to make you happy. Well, dude, yeah. it's People are nice there. Hey. like, But I'll say this. I am a Rams fan if the Lions don't win a game. Here's the thing. They win one game, and I'm back in, which is fucking awful because that's still almost just as bad as not winning a game. It's almost just as bad. And but, honestly, it's not a guarantee that you guys are going to win a game. No, it, it's, it's not at all. I, not I haven't at all. seen so any I'm reason. close to a guarantee. I haven't seen any reason we that have you guys. three possible wins the rest of the season. Yeah. Yeah. Like, maybe. And we thought that this week with and the Eagles. And we got blown out. You guys got blown out by the fucking Nick Sirianni Eagles. Yeah. Dude, it's so bad. We have no talent on that roster. There's no talent on that roster, dude. Everyone, there is no fucking talent, dude. So okay, but we we only barely touch on the Rams. Though, okay, because yeah, but I'm gonna important. get. I have I have a lot of stats for that. So so, so okay, and because so I I have some stuff that I want to say too because like Matt Stafford he just looks electric right now. Yeah, he, he looks so good. He threw for 300 yards. He had three touchdowns. Dude, Daryl Henderson has been a force. That, yeah, you could make an argument, and this is the most complete team in the NFL. Oh, I actually have um, I have something on that. Okay, let me read my stats. 
Matt Stafford is second in passing yards and passing touchdowns, only trailing Tom Brady in both categories. Which we're also going to talk about the ridiculousness of that later. Exactly. They have the number two defense, but here's the thing, Jack, is they aren't number one in any defensive category. So what's they the are top of that? five in every single one. Wow. So and I have it right here. Most balanced. You might as well be. They are hands. Like you said, they are the most all around team. They have a good offensive line. Their running game is actually good. And we thought it wouldn't be their receivers. Cooper Cup's about to break the single season receiving yards record. Fuck you. Um, and like, dude, like they just traded for a fucking Hall of Famer who's only 32 and has four and a half sacks through seven ga- or through six games. You, you, Von can't Miller. Tell me, you can't tell me that Von Miller doesn't have good years left. Yeah, dude, you're out of your mind. So you have Von Miller, Aaron Donald, and, uh, Leonard, Floyd. and Leonard Floyd all coming off. And then dude. they have this the second best defense in the league, and they have like sixth round guys out there. Like, like honestly, like what the fucking shit? That sounds like dude. They the don't need draft picks ever. They don't need draft picks. Exactly. They're, they're people are like, oh, they're giving away all these draft picks. Expl- what? Tell me why they need them. Oh, are they losing a bunch of games? Oh, is it because they live in Cleveland and they have such a difficult time getting people to live there? No, they live in L.A. Say what you will about L.A., but if you have millions of dollars, living in L.A. is the best yeah, place in planet easily there. because you can buy area where people aren't next to you, and that is the best. Yeah, exactly. If I had the money, I would stay here forever. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let's go on to what might be controversial as our number one team in the NFC in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tom Brady's. Because people are going to be freaking out because this team is lost to the Saints. But we have to remember that this is the NFL. Okay. Winning every single game is just fucking difficult. And quite honestly, you don't really want to be an undefeated team going into the playoffs because those teams typically do not win. The, the, it, we've seen that many, many times. Yeah. There's, there's literally only been one team to ever do it. Yeah, I mean, think about, remember when the Panthers back in 2015, they were basically undefeated. They they rested all their starters at the end of the game. Yeah, dude, and that they sucked. Got sh- I wanted them to go undefeated, too. Yeah, and then they got and then they got shit on by the uh, dude, that was by, a- by, by, by Von Miller, the guy that we were just talking yeah, about. Yeah, Super Bowl MVP. So, Justin, let's talk Tom for a second. Thomas Edward Brady is 44 years old. And Justin, this guy's getting better. He's, He's getting better. leading the league in every passing statistic. Bro, Ben Roethlisberger is 38 years old, and he has the mobility of Forrest Gump before he got his braces off. He, it's so bad. It's, it's brutal. so bad. Dude, he, Tom Brady looks more athletic. It's insane. I, you cannot tell me that this man is not Benjamin Button, has some cyborg shit Dude. going on. He's a freak of nature. Peyton Manning looked dead. At the end of his career. Yeah. Th- dude, think on- about all the greats in their twilight dude, at the end of their t- career. He was 39. Terrible. He was 39. Drew Brees could throw a football about three feet. Yeah, dude. Dude. And he was 40. And he was 40. Tom Brady's 44 and is getting better. He's getting better. better. He's he's better in his 40s than he was in his 20s. He's he And here's, here's why I think Tampa Bay is going to be really good. Like, I think they're going to be, like, I think they're going to continue to be very good. Like, the Saints just lost Jameis. You're not going to convince me that the Saints are going to get someone in there that's going to come in and just crush it. They're going to win their division no matter what. So they're going to they're they're going to win that division. So mm-hmm. after they win that division, I don't think it's really going to be an issue once you get to the playoffs. I think you're basically going to be like, all right, let's get everyone healthy, make sure we're good, and lock down our defense. They have a top 15 defense right now, which is whatever, you know what I mean? But they're 10th best in coverage. You know what I mean? Thing is, and like, and their secondary is fucking riddled with injuries, and they're getting guys back, and they're still tenth in coverage. And also, ultimately, if Tom Brady gets to the NFC Championship and he has the weapons that he has that are healthy, you cannot convince me there's any team, not just in the him. NFC, but the NFL, that is going to beat him in that game. Yeah. So that's you. You lose games in the NFL. That's the fact of the matter. And it's not like yes, they were getting blown out at first, but they came back. Tom Brady still threw for like 350 yards. He had two picks, four touchdowns, and one of those picks was a tip pass. Wow, Tom Brady had a bad game. Oh, what did he like throw three picks and no touchdowns? No, he had four touchdowns to two picks. I bet his passer rating was still probably around 100. It was over 100. It was over 100, yeah. Tom Brady is the best quarterback. Like also, that's also one thing that doesn't get talked about enough is the fact that Tom Brady should be quite honestly leading the MVP race. And everyone's just so sick about talking about Tom Brady. He should Brady have 10. That, that everyone's like, is like, ah, oh, yeah, Tom, he's doing, doing whatever. He's, he's like, I'm literally doing better than everyone. And everyone's like, ah, oh, but Kyle I Murray, literally, my, Kyle all Murray. my hair is gray. All my hair is gray. Well, not even though. He dude, looks younger. He, dude, he looks great. Well, his hair is gray, though. Like, he looks like a touch of gray. Like, and dude, yeah. when Vinatieri, dude, kickers don't play this long. 
kickers can't make it this long. Tom Brady was sacked three times and hit several times. Jason Hansen retired at 42. He was like, what are we talking about? And people were talking about how this is like old man rivers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was like 38. <laughs> <It's> like, <Yeah. laughs> or okay. dude, even like, dude, let's talk about dude. Aaron Rodgers, bro. He looks like he's a hundred. He grew out he his hair. Awful. He grew out his hair for the John Wick costume. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, he looks like he's the tenant of an old lighthouse yeah, up in dude. like Maine. What are you like, doing out here? Yeah. Oh, it's been years since I've seen people around here. I am not. Yeah. That's okay. literally what he looks yeah. like. <laughs> 